Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Hope you're all safe, sound, and healthy. And it is 5.35 a.m. in the morning. Yes, in the morning. As always, cannot sleep. As always, will probably sleep in another two hours. And actually, I was supposed to make this content sometime yesterday, but then I totally forgot. And then today, in as I was watching another um, creator's vlog, I was like, okay, I was supposed to have been doing something. What was I supposed to be doing? I was supposed to be making a podcast. What was I supposed to be making it on? <laughs> and then I suddenly remembered writers. Yeah. AI and writing. And, oh, don't mind the voice because, yeah, this is how it's been for the past, how do I say now, five days. Today will be the sixth the common cold or the flu or whatever you like to call it is what I have contracted and I have a sneaky suspicion that it is probably the flu or the cold that I had managed to suppress uh, a little over a month or two earlier and it just suddenly decided to come out on the day of Eid like the very last day of Ramzan, I, after Iftari, I felt it coming and I thought that it might still be under control because I usually control them, bef- uh, these viruses, before they start. And if not, then at least as soon as they start. But this time, I just couldn't do it. And so, yeah, throughout the... The Eid holidays, which are still going on actually, but I mean the actual Eid, like the three days of Eid, um, all I've been doing is, or was, uh, I'm still doing it actually, is snoozing, dozing off throughout the day and sneezing and sniveling and, you know, um, drinking lots of fluid and... Uh, practically being a half dead zombie so yeah this is how my days have been and uh, confining myself to my room which is actually pretty normal but even more than than normal (laughs) um i did not meet a single guest um and this time we actually had a lot of guests just come in um the throughout Eid, especially the first day and then um we were invited so again i didn't go uh so my parents went and i stayed home because seriously who would want to go out in this condition in in this state um you're pretty um peed off as it is you know you wouldn't want to go and mingle with people you know it's too stressful anyway so This has been my Eid, pretty much, and it's ongoing, but I'm hoping, I'm hoping it had better complete its cycle and get out of my system in the next two days, otherwise I'm really going to go wild, because seriously, this is not one of those common colds that I like, this is more the flu type, which I hate, okay, this is, did I say like, seriously? (laughs) I shouldn't have said liked. It's like more like I don't mind because I can control. <coughs> Sorry. Yeah, so you see, in this case, what happens is that my nasal passages get blocked, my sinuses get blocked, and I keep tearing off in one eye, sometimes both eyes, and then, you know, everything seems so clogged, and then I try to get all the phlegm out. It's a vicious cycle. And there's a lot of phlegm, as in, once I start, uh, well, anyway, you know what I'm trying to say. So, yeah, hence the voice. So, what was I going to talk about? I was going to talk about writers and AI and this newfangled notion that we need AI algorithmic books. Okay, you know what? As it is, we already have lesser number of readers than we had decades ago and one of the reasons i would say is probably you know the lack of original writing as it is at least that's my opinion i feel 
that um, it defeats the purpose. I understand and I truly, truly, truly think that it's okay if writers feel that they're, they need to produce content that, you know, that can sell. I get it and it's important and I'm fine with it. But, but originally, originally, the whole point of any content creation um, from writing to all the other media that came after was entertainment, infotainment with originality, okay? Producing something, creating something. Now, we call it creating for a reason. You're creating something so that it can inspire, educate, and entertain, right? So, I know nothing is original under the sun. Every idea has been explored. That's fine, but originality still can be maintained. I understand and like the idea of fan fiction, um, especially when I realized that I actually did it when uh, there was when nobody even had the concept of fan fiction, if you know what I mean. You know, when we were kids, when we were kids and we used to read our favorite books and then we would make up new stories using those same characters. So that is how fan fiction was born. So again, I have nothing against fan fiction, come to think of it. But I do, I do believe that if we bring AI into the mix and produce, I mean, we've already produced enough music. Um you know, based on algorithms, which is essentially, again, a product of AI. And yes, okay, they're very successful, but seriously, how many of us have really, really listened to these songs? Anyone? The lyrics? The words? Anyone? When was the last time when you actually listened to a song, understood the lyrics and loved it? and loved the message that was in that song, loved the words, the poetry. When was the last time? Yeah. So you see where I'm coming from? Music has always been experimental throughout. The, the whole essence of music is experimentation. And it's okay, again, if you want to add a bit of algorithmic um you know, potential into the music field, you want to throw it into, you know, you want to bring in AI and, and utilize it. It's fine. Everything is fine. But again, the whole notion of original creation or of creation in itself, um, I think it tends to get destroyed. So, again, we are already moaning um about how readership has become less and we like to blame multimedia for that we like to blame you know uh, tv and then we're blaming now social media and then we'll blame god knows what you know but it's wrong because i think i feel that um these all these media complement each other books when they're loved so much they get adapted into visuals so you can actually see what you were imagining in your mind all this time you know it's like a reproduction of you know of whatever it is that the book is trying to um the images you know the world that the book is is trying to put into your mind so it's i have no problems and i don't even see why anybody should have a problem with uh, you know, adaptations of novels and stuff. It's fine, again. To a very, very limited extent, again, I would understand using AI for writing books, but again, it defeats the purpose. Um, writers write. Okay, we write for a reason. It's because we have something to say. I do understand that there are a lot of people who write just because they have seen how writers have become famous over time and made a lot of money and so they want to commercialize it like, like how everything else is commercialized. Again, you do you. 
I have no problems. But if if that actually hurts a genuine readership, and if that actually hurts writers in the process, then you're actually going towards a declination. Because, again, writers write for a reason. Readers read for that same reason. Okay? If the readers are going to read the same kind of industrial churned books, then there is no content. There's no originality anymore. Like much, uh, like how people have stopped watching TV now. I mean, there was a time when we loved watching TV and TV shows and series and all. But now, because there is no original content, and everybody seems to follow a single pattern, again, it's probably based on an algorithm. Because of that, actually, you've lost viewership. And now more and more of us are turning towards other, uh, more creative uh, channels on the web, really. In fact, I don't even go to Netflix, to be honest. One of the things that annoy me the most about Netflix is the audio. Um, every time, if you listen to other channels, the original dramas produced in the, in the local channels, the audio is fantastic. It's loud. Okay, it's so loud that you actually have to decrease the volume. But whenever you watch shows that are produced on Netflix or for Netflix or aired on Netflix, um, you end up wanting to have a booster because the audio compared to what you're used to when you listen to originally the original productions um, of local channels from where those dramas are picked or you know where those dramas are sort of shared um, you see the difference it's very clear so I, I kind of don't like Netflix because the audio bothers me because I'm usually watching it on my laptop and, you know, I just want to be able to listen to something without plugging in the AirPods or earphones every single time. Okay, thank you very much. And with Netflix shows, I have to, you know, do that or just bear with it. So it's very, very annoying, very irritating. Okay, so back to... The original, con uh, <laughs> the original lamentations of this episode. So I get it. I get it that now some writers are actually um, creating, uh, working on creating and have created um, AI uh, software tools that helps write. And, and they claim that they're not actually doing that because they also know the that it's not actually a good idea to have a completely, you know, uh, artificially written book that has nothing to do with you or your um, your own ideas put to pen. But they do say that it would be helpful for writers because it would help with, you know, a generation of content itself as in ideas and all. But you see, again, that is also fine. That is fine, okay. So an AI tool that can help you um, search through ideas and that can help, uh, you know, sort of knit your story. Okay, fine. Yes, a little bit of help, no problem for especially a writer who has already written so much and sometimes, you know, you want to work through your block or sometimes, you know, you just want to get through with it. I get it. I would love that. But if you want real writers to compete with AI-produced books that are just churned out, then I'm sorry. Again, you're actually harming the genuine readers and you're harming genuine writers in the process and in the long run. So if the reading and writing industry actually dies, it will be because of this. Okay, so I... I am not a person who likes to sort of make judgments, and I've never really made judgments. As I said, um, I understand even now very well the pros of having AI-produced books, but I also see the cons, which most writers do already, like me. They see the cons, and I'm sure readers do too. Here's an example. 
I would love to see an idea produced in several different ways. I myself, when I write something, I write sometimes three to four different ways. And I'm not the only one. Many writers do. We take one very similar plot, one very similar character, and we create. We could create five to ten completely different um, scenarios, completely different stories with completely different endings. You know, you branch out into whichever way you want to. And again, that is what we do in fan fiction too. We take an original story and we branch out with it and make a completely new th- story with it. So that's, you know, that's, that's how when, when you produce, that is what I call original content from within, because it doesn't matter that, and that is what readers want. And that is what even viewers, you know, when we look for the same genre in a film or in a drama or in a series or in a serial, um, when we're looking for the same genre, we're actually looking for that theme, that running theme, but with completely different original plots, you know, that's what we're looking for. We're not looking for the same kind of, you know, generic, you know, the same kind of generic plot running through over and over again. For example, if you love Harry Potter, you want a world similar to Harry Potter's. But if you get a world that totally mimics Harry Potter's, it's not the same. It's just not the same because it will keep reminding you so much of the original story that it feels as if it is either a fan fiction of that story or it is just purely, you know, mimicking that story. It's like taking away the essence, the originality. So it's like, you know, like you're reading a fake Harry Potter and you wouldn't like it. The reader wouldn't like it. Okay, so that is what AI will do to the writing industry, basically. And readership will become even more limited. We will lose more readers. And writers who are already struggling right now, because as it is, what writers are struggling with already, as if that wasn't enough, um, is the fact that there are writers who are writing, again, commercially. So they're writing commercially, they're producing content, which is just to please the audience, because they know that this is the content that the uh, publishers want you know, or that the readers want. And so regardless of their own actual thoughts and feelings, they are producing that generic content and selling it out. And it is selling, obviously it's selling because again, it's following the algorithm. Okay, so AI is only going to further explore that part by churning generic and unoriginal storylines and books and at the end the reader will no longer look so you get what I'm going now here you see um, the reader is already tired of looking through all this massive choice apparent choice the illusion of choice and finding out that they actually don't have a choice okay which is one of the main reasons why we're losing readers. And when you will have AI churned books, then the reader will at one point just stop looking for a choice because by then they're all it's it's already gone. They in their minds that choice no longer exists because it's all the same. When it's all the same, then the reader doesn't need to read any more of it. You see, we want the same genre that we're in love with, with original plots, with different storylines, with different characters, with different worlds within that world. And when you will give them the same thing over and over and over again, so 
you may count for example the, the, for example that there are over 20000 books of the same theme or of the same genre but actually the those 20000 books all have the same story you know it's like reading the same story over and over again with just very very slight variations then you don't have 20000 books you just have one book with 20000 weird copies that you need to sift through and who wants to sift through seriously who wants to reread the same story over and over again 20000 times i know i don't and that is why it is going to have a very hugely negative impact in the the writing industry um as it is as i said now even not only are writers producing commercial content based on algorithms um but also a lot of the so called best sellers when you read them they disappoint you highly okay so they're highlighted by the new york times and you know and stuff like that and then there are these so called um you know book clubs online that claim to be you know the best in rating books and but you will notice that the these are mostly paid even in the new york times your so called best sellers you don't know if they are if they are really best sellers you know or if they're just paid for to be best sellers because so many of these best sellers especially in the past uh 12 years at least um in my book they have not been best sellers and it you know you it it just raises red flags and doubts because now whenever i see best seller i'm like okay let's just skip it all together and i know there are more and more who are doing that just because a writer is famous his book is best seller or just because a writer knows the right people um the book becomes best seller or just because they know how to play with the ads and the algorithms it becomes best seller or because you know we just tweak the keywords here and there put it in different categories where it can automatically rise to best seller it becomes a best seller or we simply pay the right people in the right places use our connections and our books are get are highlighted as best sellers and then after they're highlighted as best sellers that is when they begin to sell you understand how this whole thing goes on so again the real writers i mean i i don't see what's changed from the past because the whole point was to change uh the past obstructions that writers used to face of not being able to you know highlight their books of readers not being able to access books of readers not even knowing of the existence of those books so the whole point of you know utilizing social media and online book clubs and reviews and this and that was to highlight all those writers who normally would find it difficult to highlight their books or to get their books highlighted or to reach out to the readers but every single aspect has been exploited right from the start and so once again a huge amount of writers um their books are not being sold and their books are actually worth reading you know those writers and that's because readers still cannot access those books again why readers do not even know those books exist so amazon has a huge part to play in that as well because i have noticed that for a very long time and many writers to have complained about this that amazon really does discriminate against writers depending on which region they're from especially and also depending on what books they feel should be pushed forward and so a lot of very very good writers have suffered because of that and i think that's a pity it's really a pity and then you know you talk about readership and you know loss of readership and that that you know percentage is falling it's you know it's it's because 
of these factors, you know, because readers are not getting access to genuine original books. They are constantly being, um, you know, they, they're constantly being showed those books over and over again that the media wants to push on them, the, the marketing strategies, the algorithms, you know, the marketplaces, everybody concerned, you know, they're using all these patterns and algorithms and AI and stuff, you know, pushing a certain type of book in front of certain types of readers. And so, again, everything gets restricted and limited and obstructed. So um, I think it is false to say that readers are more exposed to poor writers because it's wrong. They are even today um, very, 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 I think they are less exposed to writers in new books um, than we were uh, when we did not have um, social media and when we did not have these book clubs and reviews and ratings, to be honest. As an avid reader myself, I remember how we used to um, sh we used to exchange books with each other. Then we used to tell about our favorite books, and then we would, you know, tell the uh, we would go to the shops and look for the books recommended to us by others. If we liked it, we liked it. We would recommend it to others again. If we didn't like it, we would tell them we didn't like it. They would say they liked it. We would respect that, and you know, moving on. And this is how we would read anything and everything we came across. I read. All my father's books um, when I was 12 onwards I read all his uh, you know uh, they were pretty heavy books um, they were in all the isms you know the socialism communism Leninism, Leninism and on Stalin and on Lenin and on their uh, philosophies and their ideas and then there was Shikhov and then there was you know um, I read Metamorphosis, even at that time, I remember, God knows, all the Russian, the German, the, you know, because that, that, was, that was our parents' generation when they had these books, you know. And so we had access to these books. We read all these books. You know, then we already had our own edit Lightens and we had our Agatha Christie's and we had our Sherlock Holmes and stuff. But, you know, we would access, I would access even my mother's books, which were on comparative religion, for example, or they were on, you know, reincarnation or on, you know, or romance novels. She had a huge collection of those as well. So, you know, you, when you get access to books you just read them all anything and everything that comes your way you just read them you know and this is what basically to us when we say we we were avid readers this is to be honest this is what we mean to me when somebody says i'm an avid reader i think oh so this is a person who just reads anything and everything that comes their way that is what we used to call avid readers you know so we would literally read anything and everything, you know, that came our way. If you look at my bookshelves right now, you would see that they are filled uh, with, you know, fiction and non-fiction. And in fiction, even they're filled with a variety of books and all in the genres of, uh, from classic literature to uh modern literature to, you know, thrillers and mysteries and suspense to romance. And, you know, it's a huge variety that moves on. And I never once remembered that uh, I would restrict myself to just one writer or one book. Whenever we would go to the bookshop, you know, the bookshop uh, would be filled to the roof with stacks and stacks of books. 
and even the shopkeeper because he you know he was an avid reader himself he would tell us oh we've got this now and we've got this now and we've got this now and this is really popular now and oh somebody just left a whole huge stack of old books as well so it was an old and new bookshop and we would rush always to the old books the second hand books you know again that's what avid readers do avid readers would always rush for the second hand books okay and we would get the whole collection if we could you know there were people who would sell off collections complete collections complete sets of you know nancy drew for example or franklin w dixon or the hitchcock and and we would get all all of them whatever we could get our hands on we would read it all and we would enjoy it and then we our friends were avid readers and then as i said before we would exchange books with them and we were always so respectful to always return each other's books after reading in the in mint condition we respected books we still respect books and and so to us actually to us avid readers it doesn't matter if we can read paperback or you know uh ebook as long as we're reading you know so yeah no there is no fault with the readers themselves the fault lies in the industry producing the content if you no longer allow the readers to access books of their own free will without pushing what you want towards them uh then i'm sorry but yeah you're not going to cut it it's just not going to do as writers our job is to write readers they have the right to access whatever it is that they're looking for i thought that is what freedom was all about so there it is um i don't know how in a, in how much better way to explain it right now but i think i've got the message through and i think there are many of you who have the same concerns you share the same concerns i know that especially writers i know but i'm sure even readers genuine readers i always call them genuine readers because there is a difference again between readers who read for certain reasons and genuine readers who read because of the pleasure it gives them and those are avid readers the genuine ones and genuine writers and genuine readers both are aware of the fact that we kind of don't like to put reviews on you know anywhere really and although we beg our readers to put their reviews up because it helps us because again the marketing the you know the social media amazon you know they they have forced this culture but again genuine readers really don't post reviews again as a reader myself i wouldn't post reviews because we all are very very aware of the fact that what we like or dislike um is personal to us and we cannot dictate it because again if there's something that we don't like but some other readers may enjoy and we wouldn't want to put a damper on it and say oh you know what this book is a waste of time and so nobody else would buy it you know why um there we are all very very aware of the fact that there are so many books that you know so many readers have controversial views about or contradictory views about and you know but that again that is what we don't um the concept that you should write for a universal audience again i understand for commercial purposes but when you come down to the pure art and craft of this industry then that is not what it is about it's not about catering to the universal readership or well, it's not about that writers write uh for a certain type a certain group of readers you know and we all know that and that is where then suddenly you know again the marketing uh algorithms come up with you know targeting 
you know, targeting your readership and targeting your viewership. Yeah, we all are aware of that. Thank you very much. We all know that we have a targeted readership or a certain specific group of readers that we are targeting. But again, the point is, instead of making us target them, why don't you just let those readers have full access to all the books? Instead of shoving up certain books against their faces because that has the most amount of money paid into it for its ad campaign. You know, why even? Um, what happened to readers having full access to all the books of the genre that they're interested in? As a reader, one of the things that I feel most restricted about is when I cannot find a huge variety and I only find a list of certain books pushed up, you know, to me saying, oh, buy this, buy this, because you like this, we recommend this. Okay, fine, go ahead with that, but give me access to the other ones too. Give me access to the other books too. I want to know all the books that are there in this genre, you know. Don't limit me, don't restrict me. Fine, I can see your recommendations, but I want to see more, you know. So, yeah, if anything, readers have become more restricted and and less exposed to all the great books out there. We keep on talking about how every day tons of books are being produ- published and um, tons of new writers are, you know, struggling. Oh, well, they're struggling because, you know, your algorithms and your AIs and your whatnots have come in between instead of helping them. It has only hindered them. It has hindered both the readers and the writers. And that is why this industry is going towards kind of a, a, a failure, to be honest. Um, especially if it's all going to be, you know, AI-generated material. And readership will be definitely, uh, it will fall. It will definitely fall. Don't expect it to rise. Unless, again, you want that kind of readership who would just, you know, keep on reading generic material. Uh, You know, yeah, I don't think so. Well, uh, this is it for today. And I hope everybody had a lovely Eid. And I hope um, Ramzan was super super good for everybody um we actually had a pretty good month um the the temperatures were you know very low um it rained practically half the month really um and it rained almost every day and two to three times a day so that kept us cool and when it was beginning to get a bit hot towards the end, um, it again cooled down with uh, rainstorms and rains and just winds. And even now, you know, these past three, four days, it's been quite windy, lovely breeze and going on to being quite, you know, windy. And rain was expected uh, yesterday, I think, and it rained in a few places, but not here. And I think the way the the... The sky is, um, you know, the. it seems like I, I, we could expect rain again very soon in another two to three days. So, yeah, the weather has been good to us. Um, Ramzan was good. Eid has been good weather-wise. I hope everybody had a joyous, wonderful, blessed Eid. And I hope you enjoy your Eid holidays and... Have the most wonderful time ever. So everybody, this is it for me now. Um, Take care. Khuda Hafiz. Stay blessed. Bye-bye.